recording in progress. There we go. So um, without further ado, I might as well introduce what this is all about. Obviously, this is our 22 minutes with session with Alert Logic. Alert Logic uh, offers MDR, and we're going to learn all about that with Josh. Josh is going to take us uh, through the, pl uh, the platform, kind of give us a bit more of an insight into how it's useful. Um, but I just want to tell you a little bit about RS22, who we are and, and kind of what we stand for as a, as a company. We are um, uh, IT security uh, vendor and reseller in the sense that, uh, you know, we're a value added reseller. Um, we put humans before technology. And the reason that we put humans before technology is because ultimately technology is always only there to help humans. As soon as technology is there to hinder humans, that's not the type of technology that we like to work with. So we'll always make sure that the solutions that we offer are the kinds of things that people want to use. Um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Josh and let him give us the uh, give us the scoop on Alert Logic. Hey, great! Thank you very much for, for having me here. And uh, apologies, I think I was in charge of the slides, and I should have moved on to the Who Are um, RS22 slide there. Um, but you know, fantastic! Thanks for that. And I think first thing we're going to look at uh, here is a little bit about who is Alert Logic. Um, really understand what MDR is, the managed detection and response service we deliver. Um, this by focusing on the outcomes, because there are many different acronyms out there, many different tooling, and ultimately MDR as a service. And if we focus on outcomes and making sure we deliver those. That's how you should be approaching security to solve the challenges um, that you have. And then I'll go on to the technical demo. So I think the best way is to kind of show you how this works. Unfortunately, the, the most important crucial, uh, the most important part of um, an MDR service is the people that make this up, whether it's our concierge and our white glove experience, whether it's our 150 plus security staff uh, working in our socks who do the threat hunting and the incidents. But I'm going to show you the console and also I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the um, people behind this. And fortunately, I, I used to be one as well. I used to be a security analyst for Alert Logic. So hopefully I can shine a light onto what goes on under the hood and what's then presented in the console in the shape of risk. So understand what your attack surface is. Uh, where you're vulnerable, uh, prioritize those uh, risks that are really present in your environment, help you fix them. Then threat. So when a risk becomes a threat, it's when somebody actually starts to probe it, something suspicious or malicious has happened. We've detected it with our machine learning or with our various analytics. And then a SOC analyst has reviewed it if, if that's required and presented it to you in, in the console. So once they understand they found a threat, there's something that needs to be responded to. It's all about response. Um, so some of them will be uh, response guidance and other things can be actions you can take within the console via automated response playbooks. We'll look at that. And finally, uh, the reporting. I think that's really important. I'm sure there's some compliance officers on here or people at least with one, half an eye on compliance. And when you're secure, you, you coincidentally end up being uh, compliant to a lot of standards. So we have a lot of reports in there to show how we tick those boxes for you. Great. And... The first piece to cover off then is you know, who is Alert Logic. So, um, I said we're managed detection and response, um, and the, really the, the problem that we're trying to solve here is by is augmenting your security teams or even just your IT teams for, for organisations who are either resource strapped, they can't hire a twenty four seven SOC in in house, maybe knowledge gap, they don't have the security expertise that are there. Or maybe they've just been doing something in a way that's just not working for them anymore. You know, things do move on. So the idea is that we focus on these outcomes a little peace of mind, um, which I'll get onto more of those outcomes in the next slide. But we've been doing this since 2002, so it's 20 years in the game. Uh, MDR is a more recent term, but we've definitely been delivering MDR since 2002, so one of the oldest um, uh, vendors out there. And, we, and because of that, we're trusted by over 4,000 organizations, which uh, gives us great insight into so many different customer environments, so different many, so many business verticals. So we have a great 30 to 40 petabytes of threat data lake that's constantly refreshing, allows us to hunt across that for emerging threats, as well as refine our analytics and make sure that everything is, is working correctly for our customers and create some fantastic threat intelligence with our internal threat intelligence uh, teams as well. Uh, of course, along with that, you know, we operate across multiple geographies. We have a SOC in uh, Cardiff, uh, Wales, um, where I started off. You can tell by my accent. And also in Houston, uh, US, as well as offices around the globe and in other places. Um, and we're a market defining leader. And recently we've joined Help Systems as well, been acquired by them. So now hoping to really kind of broaden our horizons and help define in more areas, um, also as part of that security uh, ecosystem. So long, long may that continue. I talked about outcomes, and this really is was what, Every organization is faced with this challenge of, of security. And it's presented quite nicely in this pre and poach priest outcome uh, diagram. Um, if you think of the middle part, that's you have the kill chain on the bottom. When you have that successful exit, that's where breach occurs. It's called boom here. I definitely prefer to call it breach. 
But what we can do then before to make sure that breach doesn't ever occur, or at least reduce the likelihood of successful attacks, because what I actually said is, is impossible to make sure it never occurs. You know, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Nobody can guarantee that. But we reduce the likelihood of successful attacks by addressing uh, the vulnerabilities that are in your environment, letting you know where vulnerabilities are, where configuration problems are, helping you patch and harden appropriately, and letting you know where you're going to spend best spend your time in doing that, and also addressing threats as early down the kill chain as possible. If we can catch something before they get to the compromise, and maybe someone's probing your environment, or maybe somebody has seen a vulnerable system and they're about to go ahead and, and, and try and enter it. That's where we can help you. And on the post-breach side of things, uh, this is all about reducing the impact of successful attacks. So it, it's it's really, I, security professionals have always had this attitude that you're going to get compromised at some point. It's a matter of, of when, not if, um, because people are involved in this at every step of the way, whether it's people building the systems, they might make mistakes. Maybe you're buying uh, things, taking things off open source uh, shelves or maybe even you know, supply chain compromises. There's risk in everything that we do. So we have to be prepared for these um, these compromises. And when you accept that, you then look, right, now I know compromise is inevitable. How can I make sure I reduce the impact of an attack as and when it occurs? And that occurs via rapid detection almost as, you know, as soon as possible. We have a 15-minute SLA on our instance, uh, which is one of the best in the industry to make sure you, you're alerted as soon as possible. We then give you recommended response guidance as well as automated response uh, playbooks and capabilities within the console so we can detect in the quickest manner possible and respond in the quickest manner possible, ultimately disrupt and contain that attack before they're able to get further down the kill chain. You know, Ransomware is not something that happens within 15 minutes or even a day. It's something that takes weeks and months uh, to use one example. Fantastic. So uh, I think that's just the outcomes. And I'm going to use those outcomes to really show you um, what it is we're able to do for our customers uh, in the console. And so if I just um, come out of this uh, PowerPoint one second and jump into uh, my browser. So this is the alert logic uh, console. And so here we're going to first focus on the, um, the proposed breach side of things. Before I do that, I just want to give you a feel for what it is that we have. I can do a demo that could take well over an hour. I've got 22 minutes uh, today or less. So I want to focus on just what we have and then dig into the most important elements. So in the response side of things, we have those incidents that we'll be raising. We're going to focus on some of those. We're then going to look at the exposures. Um, so that's we have vulnerabilities and misconfigurations uh, and automated response will look at that as well. We're not going to have time for health today, but obviously health is really important. That means making sure that we don't have any blind spots in your environment. So we have our tools and we have monitoring and we have support that make sure we're, we're collecting all the data we need to make sure we can make accurate detections, accurate assessments of threats and exposures in your environment environment. We also have an investigate capabilities. Um, so we able to provide you here with um, ability to look through logs, look through network traffic. We have that cap we do deep packet inspection there, as well as our vulnerability library and our threat intelligence center. So we're really sharing all of the insight that we have into your environment. Yes, we're doing a lot of this for you, but it'll make sense to make it available to you. And depending on who you are and how you want to work with us, some people work in tandem with us. We do work with certain SOCs. And some people might not have the time to do this at all, might be really focusing on the IT operations, in which case this might not be an area they go to, but it is there, you know, should they need to. And there are a lot of operational benefits to using the log search and creating your own custom correlations, for example. Uh, finally, then we'll look into reports and really focus on compliance reports. We have 100, over 100, but I think compliance is the most important for, for here and now. So you can see there's a lot in here. It really is a XDR capability within here, XDR outcomes. We look across multiple different sources. And that's what we're going to focus on initially is, is looking across all the different sources you have in your environment. So whether they are um, email, whether they are um, whether we have endpoints or EDRs or your antivirus tools, if you're using something like a CrowdStrike, something like a Sentinel-1, we'll ingest those and create security value for the back of that, as well as offering things like file integrity monitoring and firewall analysis and authentication analysis, including advanced detections like user behavior, user behavior anomaly detections. So as you can see here, really we're looking at the wide breadth of everything that organizations have, and then we have the appropriate depth of our threat intelligence teams and security researchers to make sure we're making the right detections across the, the kill chain and across things like the MITRE um, attack framework. And what you get here then in this dashboard, and I say many dashboards, but this is one we're gonna spend some time on, this is the instance console. So there are 500 or so instances that have been open. The idea is when they're open, that means there's something that we want you to take a look at or respond to. 500 is a massive number. It's is really just for demo purposes. Typically, we expect organizations to get between 10, 20, or 30 uh, a month, depending on their, their size. Uh, but these are all been seen by SOC analysts that the potential to be high or critical, so they maybe have a big impact on your environment, or if there's any ambiguity. A couple of them are automated, uh, but where possible, where, where needed, a human analyst reviews this. This is what I used to do. And in that process, we'll validate the instance. If it's a false positive, we'll close it down as a low. You won't see alerted to that, but it is a record of it because that's important as well. 
Um, if we, we then enrich the alert as well, so look what can see the surrounding data, not just what tripped the wire of the analytics, so to speak, what else can I correlate across different data sources or even different incidents? Um, and then we'll give it a severity. So medium would be emailed only or put to your tick preferred ticketing platform. I describe these as wait till Monday morning or wait until you get a bit of time to go and check, you double check, lot looking over your shoulder alerts, and you'll see what I mean when we get into the instant console there. And the highs and criticals, this is really, you need to drop everything in order to respond to this threat, contain it and, and eliminate it. So here we have a phone call as well. So we'll be calling up whoever is listed on the response tree, calling down the list of people until we speak to somebody so they can action this. Uh, and again, all in that 50 minute SLA. So really timely responses here. You can see how, you, how you've been hit over, over the, the, um, the last month or so. So you get an idea of the trend analysis. You can see a breakdown of different MITRE tactics. So what type of attacks is your organization experiencing? Where are they coming from? Where are they attacking you as well? You might have a hybrid environment, a multi-cloud environment. You might have multiple geographies and locations. Uh, we can include all of those in here and give the same service and also allow you to analyze against each other. So if you know that in this case, one on our left, this is the environment which we've named is um, the largest one that's been attacked. This is where I'm probably gonna spend most of my time hardening and patching because it seems it's been targeted uh, the most in that sense. Great, now let's dig into some of this data. So if I click investigate, um, we'll jump here to the incident console, uh, just allow me to update the incident experience. So we can see now the list of incidents that have been raised you know, by the, uh, the service um, um, for you uh, as part of our, our SOC services. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have the various different you know, tactics, as we said, and the detection sources. So again, we're looking across so many different types of attacks and so many different data sources. And if we jump into one like this, this is uh, a Sentinel-1, for example. Uh, so I talked about the EDR integration, you know, we're not duplicating alerts, there's no real value to that. But if we have here, we have a failed remediation of a threat. So they've detected a threat and they've either been unable to take the action or they weren't authorized to take the action because you know, EDR agents, EVs, they don't always block. Sometimes they're not too certain. But analysts has looked at this and decided, look, they should have in this instance, but it hasn't. So let's go and call you up so you can work on this. Uh, we have the education here um, to let you know why you need to do that. Uh, but I actually want to show, draw you to another instance, which I think is a little bit um, richer because I actually got an analyst to work on this. I asked one of my old friends in the SOC to, to work on this. And you can see his name on the right, Jamal Hurd, um, because demo environment, we can't get them to work everything. You know, their, their time is valuable. Um, but what we have here is a critical instance. So this will be called by Jamal. Jamal will be working with your instant responder, your team to make sure you can respond to this. It's unusual cross executions from a sysfold directory on a certain machine. Uh, and the education here will actually explain to you that this is uh, often used for malware propagation. So once they gain entry, they'll look to spread themselves. Ransomware use this a lot. Um, or if you need just lateral movement to see what host they can get, get a hold of, they'll deploy, remotely deploy um, new, new malware and backdoors across your environment. So there's the education. Uh, we even have references so you can go and read up on this. But obviously, you don't want to be educating yourself in this scenario at the beginning. The first thing you want to do is deal with the immediate response recommendations. And this is what Jamal is, is calling you up and talking to you about. The first action he says to take is to isolate the host. Um, he's explained why a little bit as well. We understand that's important because if you want to isolate in a host and that's going to have an impact on your operations, you need to understand the consequences if you don't do that. And that's part of this, this service and the, the expertise that we offer. Our security expertise match with your operational expertise and make sure we end up in the right outcome for your organization. I see the host isn't enough. They've got control of a user, a user account, Dean Pittman. Um, so actually we need to disable this user as well, or they might be able to just log in elsewhere in the, your environment. So making sure we holistically detect this threat. And on that note, I talked how this is maybe a post-compromise incident. It's, it's malware propagation. They've gained entry. We've correlated this to different instances. In so we have an Atlassian 20, 2022 um, remote code execution expert, which gained them access. And we have a, a backdoor they created initially, the web shell to allow them to start to take these actions. And each of those will have their mediation actions contained within their separate instant IDs. You can navigate to that. And of course, Jamal will have correlated this so he can actually put that all together you know, in words for you and make you understand, here's what you need to do first. So you're not you know, flapping out, trying to work out what's the, the best thing to do. Before I get to response, I just want to cover off the evidence. So remember, this is what Jamal uh, and the SOC team have reviewed as part of that, that incident under that 50 minute SLA. And actually, our average times are closer to one minute uh, on average for um, investigating. Within four minutes, we're normally able to triage and within 10 minutes, response action begins. That's a really great you know, speed that you can tell there. Of course, you know, the 50 minute SLA, some more complex instance might take the full 50 minutes to get our first response out. And we're not done with you in 50 minutes. We continue to investigate for as long as you need our support to make sure we completely address that, that compromise and remove them. Otherwise, we're just going to see more and more instance. So the idea is that we really take your security seriously to, to holistically address this compromise, not just address single symptoms. 
and you don't have to look at that evidence. That's Jamal's look that he's looked at more. He's flagged that as evidence. But if you want to, it's it's all there, so you can correlate. Uh, you can you can you know, see what we've said and see if it's correct. If you do want to have your own say in this, maybe educate yourself, build up your security knowledge. Now there are some response actions we talked about. Uh, one was to run a playbook, uh, so so one was to isolate a host. Sorry. And we can actually disable, uh, isolate a compromised host. We can disable a user via the portal um, here itself. So we can go and run that then and we're going to take that action uh, from the data that it sees in the instant. If that, that's very good. That's going to be very quick. You can do that um, as we're ad hoc. You know, it's, it's a slightly manual step to and trigger it. But actually what would be even better is if we could have a fully automated response playbook. So that's why we have this automated response section here uh, where we begin with simple responses with you. So as part of the automation journey that you begin on, and um, we'll create some, 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 some scenarios for you that, that address the most common threats. So whether that's blocking on the perimeter via um, firewalls or WAFs, whether that's isolating hosts via EDRs, whether that's disabling users via your Microsoft AD, Azure AD or IM, um, we, we have those capabilities there and we will identify what technology you have and build these with you initially. Just so you understand what that looks like, uh, let's look at disabling uh, an Active Directory user. And what you need to do first is, is set up that integration with the response plane. So in this case, it's the Active Directory. Um, demos, sometimes they take a little while, so it's always the curse of doing a live demo. Um, and so we can, here's the credential we have already. Um, actually, all that requires if I was to create a new one is just some authentication information. Um, so it's very easy to dial that in. And also what's really important is that we can actually go and test this. It's actually been grayed out because I clicked to create a new one, um, but that would allow us then to go and test it and make sure that this, this response play it, it works before I actually has to go live. And if it, and it, I haven't got time to let you run through this. It takes about four or five minutes sometimes. Um, but that will show you where it fails. If it does fail, and we can help you remediate uh, that. Then when do you want this to happen? So what, what users? There might be certain users you never want to run this playbook on, or maybe have a separate playbook for those users. So we have a list of users who are uh, Matt's made one that we can exclude in this case. We don't want this playbook to run on those. It might be uh, your CEO really doesn't want to be included, or maybe you have some uh, response or IT crucial services that you want to, to keep out of that um, as well. The second piece then is send approval. So we always recommend that you begin with this approval process. This will give you the, confirm the confidence in the automation. And we can do that via email. Select the people that you want to, to email it to uh, or via a mobile app. So um, to my mobile phone, I can get a push notification um, that says take response action, yes or no. Or we can even click investigate and it will take me to a version of this console that allows me to dig into the instant information so I can be sure I'm making the right decision. Say nine times out of 10, you clicking approve, you get confidence in the playbook um, or you already have confidence in it. You can just remove that step entirely. Um, and now that's a fully automated response playbook. You don't have to do anything and it would have taken action to contain that threat. Um, of course, we'll still call um, you up to make confirm that's gone through and let you know if there's anything else that you need to do, um, which might be require some more manual uh, intervention in, in those scenarios, which it does. Final piece is when do you respond? So we can, we, we as Alert Logic, we have security advisors. We have an opinion on this. We want to tell you, we have thousands and thousands of different detections and there are multiple different triggers that can be within there. So you could even scale that up even, even further. Uh, but these are the ones that we say is really important for you to, uh, sorry, that disabling a user is the right action to take. So this is a ransomware one, for example. This is some anomalous activity. These are all the scenarios that you might want to um, block um, a, a, a user or disable a user. Um, so you can pick the, from that list one by one, pick the ones that you think you're comfortable with, um, or if you're, you want to use them all, you can click to respond or recommend analytics. So take our advice into which ones to use, but you still have the control. You don't have to take our advice uh, in its entirety. You can have that control to select what you need. And of course, you can turn this on and off, which I think is always an important control to know that you can control this automation. People do have the concern of an automation running amok. We're yet to see that on our custom base, but we know it's important to have those triggers and those capabilities in there so that you can have faith in the automation. Uh, the final piece then is the play, so expert playbooks. So if you get better, if you want to move down your automation journey, and you can actually start to create these more complex uh, e-workflow workbooks that are going to have a process flow using the various widgets that allow you to start to build stuff out uh, according to conditions. And so I've seen some customers use really complex ones that spiral out from here. So that's something we can enable as you go and show on your automation journey. But that covers off how to limit the uh, impact of a successful attack uh, and really the bread and butter of our service and our, and our SOC service. I know, uh, I think there's a few poll questions um, that we're going to look at quickly before I move on to the how to limit your attack service section. Yeah, I'm just going to launch those now. So those should pop up, um, obviously, for the benefit of those who are watching these on uh, the recording. Uh, you were in with the chance of winning a £25 uh, Amazon voucher. We would have uh, popped the, the replies into the um, 
into a hat and drawn the winner. However, the lucky ones who are here today are the ones who are going to be uh, in with a chance of winning it. So um, fill in some of these uh, th these questions as you go along. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, we will, uh, it will remain up there for the end part of Josh's uh, demo here. You, back to you, Josh. Uh, thank you very much. So I spent most of the time on that piece, and that's the most important, how to respond to a threat. We also, it's, it's even better if we can make sure that the threat never really occurs in your environment. So what we do that is via the assessment. We have, we have asset discovery, so we know any assets you might have in your environment, really address that shadow IT problem. And then we make you aware of any, any exposures that might be on there. So uh, there's a case, case there's 15,000 or so. Um, 12,000 of those are this CVE, so common vulnerability and exploits, and the rest then will be misconfiguration. So big problem in cloud. There's a lot of, we have a lot of sections for cloud misconfigurations. That tends to where people fall down. Uh, also, we do have some for on-premise um, as well. But crucially, it's 1,000 actions that are going to remove, remediate this. And um, so that's prioritizing, organizing them all by remediation action, rooting multiple vulnerabilities under one uh, action. And we have lots of reports that will show you the trend over time. So you can demonstrate to your execs, to whoever you need to, to your partners, people want to work with you. Here's how we've constantly decreased our attack surface and improved on our security posture with the help of alert logic. Uh, I won't go into those now. I think it will benefit to just go straight into the exposures console. So this will give you a flavor of the type of things we'll pick up, whether it's um, unrestricted outbound access on all ports. You know, that's something that's probably not a good practice. You should limit down to only what you need, as well as the CVEs, like we mentioned. So there's a pretty recent one for OpenSSL. By organized by remediations, we now have the various... Um, so we have, the, excuse me, we have the actions you can take in response to this. So Windows update is always the biggest one because people have so many Windows and machines in there. Uh, but what we're doing then is giving you the mediation action. See, there's three FX assets and almost three and a half, or three and a half thousand exposures associated with that. And we're also organized by TRI score, so threat risk index. Think of this as threat as risk points. This is the riskiest thing in your environment right now. You can see there's almost a ten thousand score there. So the next one's two thousand. This means you're putting your time uh, where it matters. We recognize that IT teams are already stretched thin. Patching is an endless process. So you need to make sure when you are doing it, you may doing it as effectively as possible by focusing on the biggest fishes, uh, and the biggest risks in your environment. Um, quickly now, I'll show you how we continue the education here. Make sure you know what the, the impact could be here, as well as the different resolutions. But obviously, it's all grouped under the same resolution here as well as we'll show you the metadata about the host. You can go and patch this um, quite quickly and easily. Uh, some of our customers will even use this to feed into some of their patching automation tools, this data. Fantastic. Uh, so I have a few minutes left. The next bit I want to cover off is just the report. So I mentioned how we have so many different reports that we can look at, you know, with different threats that you're seeing there. Um, customers, they have so many here because there'll be different ones that fit different use cases and some of our customers will, will start to get familiar with ones and they'll have those. We also build them upon request. Something I probably should mention is this is an entirely proprietary uh, tool set and, and service. We don't buy uh, products from other vendors and use them. Uh, we're not beholden to their roadmaps. We own all of this. We build what our customers need. We listen to our customers' requirements and create that um, as and when we see is fit. Um, so this is a compliance reports, and we have uh, things for HIPAA, SOC Trust, GDPR, um, NIST, as well, as well as many others. I use PCI because we're a PCI accredited scanning vendor, so we've got really great um, capabilities um, there. If you're PCI, you perform for PCI requirements, we can tick a lot of boxes for you. And what we'll do on the left is list out the requirement as required by the vendor, and the right will explain how we're doing it and even give you links into the console as to how we're doing that uh, for you. And if you were to download this, you could download this or even schedule it. So you don't even have access. You can email send this to someone's inbox periodically without giving them access to the console um, as a PDF or PowerPoint or whatever you need. And then it will look something like this. So it's actually a much richer report where we have um, the requirements on the left. And if we go further down, it's pulling in stuff from other reports to actually show that evidence uh, for you as well. So this is a 111 page PCI report. Give that off to your auditor, let them read through it and you get to have spend the rest of your day you know, focusing on, uh, on, on the things that really matter to your organization. Great, so I, I, you know, coming to the end of the time, um, think that, that'll do for the demo. I hope um, it's beneficial. As I said, there was a lot more we could have covered. So if you do want a follow-up session, we can do a one-on-one -on -one demo and really see how this can fit your security uh, challenges should you should you be interested. Yeah, excellent. So anyone who wants to pop off, of course, uh, you know, now you can. However, if anyone wants to stick around for questions, um, that's also uh, pretty useful. So if there are any questions that, that want to come in, um, there was one question that I had from someone who I'm afraid uh, couldn't be with us here today. Um, and basically, they, they simply wanted to know a little bit more about how to how you deal with emerging threats. 
Um, so obviously I'll, we'll share the video to them um, later, but uh, ha how is it that kind of alert logic deals with those emerging threats? Uh, yeah, no, I've, I love talking about this actually. I used to be a threat hunter uh, myself and I still work closely with the threat hunters and the research team. So um, I kind of alluded to it that we have you know, 4,000 plus customers give us a real wealth um, of, of data when it comes to hunting these emerging threats. Uh, we have an established emerging threat process that our internal um, threat research team, our engineering team, um, and, and the SOC teams and multiple stakeholders. Um, and what we do is we look to see, you know, first we have to address are we affected? We have to make sure we're secure because we hold data for our customers as well. So that's one thing that goes off to our corporate security team. The rest then is, is making sure our customers are protected. And so when something is emerging threat, it's normally like a zero day, it hasn't been seen before. Um, that means there isn't a, a rule that we can go and write or content that's out there. And um, so really we rely on here on um, our manual threat hunting capabilities. We track a lot of different threat actors or adversaries, some of which, well, many of which actually are, are are really hot emerging threat actors. They love to jump on these new vulnerabilities to have a great chance of success because nobody's got the chance to patch or, or mitigate against it yet. So we have stuff that we watch for them, um, you know, things like their, their infrastructure, where they're coming from. Um, there are other steps of down the kill chain. You know, there might be emerging threat, might be one element of it, but there's other things they're going to have to use that aren't going to be novel. We can use that and then manually work backwards and forwards. And the other thing that's great is that our, our threat research team always have this, um, this forward thinking approach. So if they, things like the log4j example, we know Java is inherently vulnerable you know, well just because of how popular it is and how the scrutiny that it gets uh, it's been proven throughout the years in 2017 apache struts to now log for j so we create some forward thinking really broad telemetry signatures that are not suitable for any form of automation they would just completely spam our, our console uh, but manually we can comb through these and start to analyze with the you know the analytic minds can actually find the instances of this zero day, of this emerging threat. So we learn lessons from some of our customers who might be compromised initially by that, make sure they're right, get them back to healthy, and also then apply that lesson across the rest of the board, create some automated content. So going forward, uh, we catch that then under the 50 minute SLA. And until we can get an automated thing in, in place, that manual threat earning process, which we do daily across our entire customer base, make sure the gap is filled and you're still protected while we get something automated out there. Fantastic. I think that that's a that's a really solid answer. And thanks so much, Josh, um, for for taking us through this today. Um, you know, you've you've done really really well. We slightly went over the uh, sorry about the, that the the, the twenty two minutes mark, but don't worry about it. You, I think the the point being that you've condensed a pretty tricky topic into one bite sized piece, which uh, is exactly what we wanted. So uh, fantastic, and thank you so much. If there are any other questions, of course, um, my advice would be to reach out to Graham, um, who is obviously, um, you know, kind of leading the, the sales from our side. Um, but then we can kind of always set up demos and, and kind of take things further um, with a little bit more of an in-depth look um, and, and, and personalize it to your business. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Josh. I, I just want to say, um, uh, you know, a great RS22, well done from us. Um, and we look forward to, uh, to doing more with you in the future. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Very good to have you. And hopefully the demo maybe was at least 22 minutes. So maybe we could say that that, that was the part that I got right. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you for having me. All right. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. And everyone, um, you know, wish you all the best. See you again next time. All the best. Take care. Bye.